Hi, this is Ron Sipsik, and in this video we're going to take a look at the definition of GDP and then look at the two basic ways that GDP is measured. And of course the focus uh, will be on the U.S. economy. Now let's define GDP. Uh, GDP is an acronym that stands for Gross Domestic Product. GDP is the dollar value, so GDP is a measure of value. Uh, as as I have discussed previously uh, in both my microeconomics courses and macroeconomics courses, one of the fundamental aspects of humanity is the pursuit of value. And we've talked about how human beings take their time and their money and try to assign it where they believe they get the most value. Isn't it interesting that gross domestic product is a measure of value? It's an estimation of value. Now, it needs to be said right up front that the government, in measuring gross domestic product, cannot know the subjective value that a person has for a particular product. For instance, if I buy a camera, the government cannot know what I really value that camera at. But the government can make an estimate of my value for that camera by looking at what I was willing to pay for it. Now, we know that the price that someone pays for something is less than what they value it at. And that difference is called consumer surplus. People value things generally more than they pay for them. And most people walk away from a transaction with something called consumer surplus. Nevertheless, the government cannot really know what that surplus is. So in assigning value, we'll, we'll learn that one of the ways government assigns value is to simply look at what the person paid for the product. Nevertheless, GDP is an estimation of value. That's the first point we want to knock down. Secondly, we want to understand that GDP is a measure of final output. Output can be either goods and or services, goods being tangible products, services being intangible products. But the point is we're going to estimate the value of final output. Thirdly, the output that will be included in GDP needs to be domestic output. In other words, we're interested in a measure of domestic productivity and we want to exclude the value of any output that was produced outside the geographic boundaries of the United States. So the GDP system is a system based on geography. If the output is produced within the United States, it's counted as part of US output. If it's made outside the Uni United States, it's going to be counted as the output of another country. Now, if, uh, the federal government also makes an estimate of what is called gross national product. And at one time, many of the nations in the world used a gross national product system. In that system, the output uh, is determined as being domestic if it's produced by a citizen in that particular country. So an American producing output, whether they're living in America or living abroad, uh, that output would be counted as part of U.S. output. However, most of the world today has gone to a GDP system, and GDP tends to be the more standardized measure of output. And in a GDP system, output is determined on geography, not who makes the output, but where the output is made. And the last dimension of GDP that we want to look at is the idea that GDP is a flow. It measures output within a particular uh, period of time. And in the United States, GDP is actually measured quarterly, but we're actually after an annual rate of output. That's really what the government is after. GDP is a flow. It's an amount measured over a particular period of time. Many, many, many things in my possession uh, uh, many things that still give me value from things like clothing to household items, you know, a, a television set or furniture, 
Uh, my, you know, I could look at my automobiles. I mean, I could go on and on. M much of my output was not purchased in the current year, and yet that output is still providing me with value. However, any output not produced within the current period is not counted as part of GDP. So GDP very specifically focuses on the output of a specific period. So we can say then, let's just summarize, GDP is a measure of final output. GDP is a measure of, I'm just going to put this word in here, domestic output. And GDP is a measure of current, current output. And these are the three operative words, final, domestic, and current. Okay, now let's move on and discuss how GDP is actually measured. This is no small undertaking for a nation the size of the United States. The U.S. economy is, um, is, is in current dollars, well over $17 trillion system meaning we produce over $17 trillion of measurable output at the time of this video, and it continues to grow. Now, I say measurable output because some output isn't measurable. Some output is, for instance, there's an, there's an underground economy where uh, there are things made and sold that the government can't track because the, uh, the markets are illegal. I call these illegal legals and illegal illegals. Uh, let me explain. If I uh, perform a particular service for someone, say that I fix their car, and fixing cars, are clear, that's clearly a legal activity. There's nothing illegal about fixing someone's car. But in the process of fixing people's cars and taking payment for those services, I don't report those services then in effect I'm evading taxes. That's probably the reason I'm not reporting them is to evade taxes. And that activity is in the so-called underground economy. So it's legal to fix cars, but illegal to not report income. Well, there's, you, can, you might imagine there are just probably trillions of dollars of economic activity each year that the government misses in that respect. And then there are the illegal illegals. It's illegal in the United States to sell cocaine. And so there, but we know there's cocaine trade going on in our cities and in our nation. So it's illegal to sell cocaine and it's illegal to not report the income you generate on the sale of cocaine. So you're actually doing two things wrong when you market sell cocaine. Uh, it's an illegal illegal. This kind of activity is not counted, of course, as part of an annual estimate of GDP. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go back to the simple circular flow model. And the simple circular flow model is a very nice way of seeing this. So I'm going to very quickly sketch the simple circular flow model. Here's the business sector. Here's the household sector. We've got an arrow coming around like this, and we've got an arrow coming around like this. And so let's say that someone, someone makes uh, a $100 expenditure on an article of clothing. Okay, maybe this is a jacket. So there's a $100 expenditure on the value of a jacket, on, on a jacket. And the value of uh, the price of that is $100. Now, Again, uh, the buyer who buys that $100 jacket values that jacket more than $100. They, they, they get some level of consumer surplus. Nobody pays more for an item than what they subjectively value it at. Uh, that's irrational. And so the, 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 the measurement system, though, can only see what was spent. The measurement system can't see what was going on in the head of the buyer. So there's a $100 expenditure. That flows over to businesses as $100 in revenue. That flows out of the business sector as $100, $100 in resource payments. And that flows over to households as $100 of income.
Now this was explained earlier. This was explained earlier in a uh, in a video I did on the simple circular flow model. So I'm not going to go through all the details of these connections. I'm assuming that. Uh, the, the, uh, the person watching the video here has seen the other video. But the point is, expenditures flow around the simple circular flow model and become income. Now, how do you value output in a GDP system? Well, one way would be to look at what the buyer spent on the item. We've been talking about that, alluding to that. So if I spend a hundred dollars on a jacket, one way to value the jacket would be to look at what somebody paid for it. A second method of, of to value a second method to value the jacket would be to look at what businesses paid out to make it. So in making that jacket, there was $100 of resource payments that were received. Now, let's just go back and just, just quickly re remember, in that jacket, there's going to be what? There's going to be wage, wage payments made to bring that jacket to market. There's going to be interest payments made on capital to bring that jacket to market. There's going to be rent payments made for any raw materials that go into making that jacket. And lastly, there's going to be profit payments made along the way from the, from the, from the point where uh, natural resources are accumulated and where the jacket's manufactured, and then the jacket is actually uh, wholesaled, perhaps retailed. All of the steps in that process are going to involve wage payments, interest payments, rent payments, and profit payments. And as we said in an earlier video, all of those payments have to add up to $100. Now some of these payments may have been made, would have been made before the sale of the jacket, say some of the wage payments and interest payments and rent payments, and even some of the profit payments in getting the jacket to market were made before the jacket was actually sold to the final consumer. But it's, it's, it's going to be true that some, some profit was not earned until the jacket was sold. So the point is, this jacket will affect economic activity by a hundred dollars both on the expenditure side and on the income side so there's so there's two ways the government can attack if you will GDP one approach is called the expenditure approach value output on the basis of what the final consumer paid for it a second approach is the income approach value output on the basis of what business is paid out to make it. Okay, so the expenditure approach and the income approach. And of course, at least in theory, those two pro approaches should yield the same number. Okay, now we'll be furthering this discussion uh, be th because we're now talking about uh, GDP in a simple circular flow format there's more to be said on this and so in a later video I'll be actually taking this closer to reality by talking about GDP calculation in a complex circular flow world.